By this point, I hope you've learned a ton about what ERPs are, what kinds of scientific questions they can answer, and the major steps of signal processing and data analysis. In this set of videos, I'm going to describe how you can use what you've learned to critically evaluate ERP studies. ERPs can be great, but there are a lot of ways that an ERP study can go wrong. After all, we're trying to measure brain activity from electrodes on the skin over the skull. So you need to know what to look for when trying to judge whether the conclusions of an ERP study are valid. Of course, I can't cover every possible problem that might arise. Instead, I'm going to focus on the top 10 most common problems that I see in ERP papers. This will be a quick overview. If you want more details, all this is covered in a free, online-only chapter of my ERP book. I've divided my top 10 list into three groups, data problems, analysis problems, and design and interpretation problems. Let's start with data problems. Problem number one is noisy data. By the time the voltages get from the neurons to the scalp, they're pretty small, and they're embedded in lots of noise. We have EEG activity that isn't related to our stimulus, like alpha band oscillations. We have biological artifacts coming from the eyes, the muscles, and the skin. And we have electrical devices in the environment that induce the flow of current through the electrodes. If we don't average together enough trials, this noise won't average out, and you'll get a noisy looking waveform like this. See the large voltage deflections in the baseline? That's what you need to look out for. That residual noise is a lot smaller than the P3 here, but it's about the same size as this P2. If the experimental effects in a study aren't much bigger than the baseline noise, you should be skeptical of the effects, even if they're statistically significant. Remember, there are so many data points and electrode sites in an ERP study that you can almost always find a significant but bogus effect somewhere. So when you see an effect like this P2, you should be skeptical, even if it's statistically significant. Here's another example of noisy data. One day, a postdoc brought me these data to show me the cool effect she had found. It was her first ERP experiment, and she was very proud. But look at how noisy the data are. The difference between the waveforms after the stimulus was smaller than the noise deflections in the baseline. And the effect started at about 20 milliseconds, which is way too early. It takes 40 to 60 milliseconds for information to even reach the cortex, and it's very rare for a difference in cognitive processing to occur before 100 milliseconds. I generally pointed these things out to the postdoc, who looked quite crestfallen. But when we looked at the rest of the data, we saw some really clear effects, and she ended up with a nice publication in the end. 